Welcome. I'd like to thank you for uh, taking time out of your day to join me here. Um, obviously, this isn't the way that we're accustomed to doing church, but circumstances dictate that this is the best way for us to do it right now. So this is the way we're going to do it as long as we have to. Uh, if you haven't taken the time to watch the videos that I posted, I posted four videos uh, from YouTube on uh, Facebook. And I just ask you to go ahead and watch those, maybe even stop this video right now and uh, watch those videos so that uh, we can all have a chance to, to begin just worshiping God and uh, getting ourselves into a right attitude and a right uh, frame of mind in order to be able to worship the Lord and focus on his word here in just a couple of minutes. So if you haven't yet, uh, just stop this video, go and watch those. Uh, they're hymns and choruses that we normally sing in church and uh, then come back and start this up again. Uh, I kind of like the Facebook Live because I could see who is here, but this way we can't see who's here. So maybe just put a comment on our Facebook page that you watched the video or gave me a thumbs up. Um, and you know, I'd just like to remind you again that the reason that we're doing this this way is because uh, this coronavirus is just so dangerous. Um, I saw a situation where there were somewhere around 20 to 30 people that were infected because of a church that refused to close down. And in this day and age with the technology that, technology that we have, um, I don't want to take that chance. And so we are going to meet this way. Uh, on Wednesday, I'd like to try something a little bit different. I'm going to set up a Zoom meeting, Z-O-O-M, and I'll try to have the information on Facebook and send it out to you ahead of time. And uh, that way we can be a little bit more personal in that. You'll be able to get on your computer and watch what other people are saying and doing, and, and uh, we'll be able to see you as al also. The other thing I wanted to mention is that uh, because of the way things are, we can't take up a normal offering. And so I did encourage you to continue in that discipline of giving, uh, but do it in whatever manner you find works best for you. We do have a giving option on our face, our, our web page, um, and you can just look at the uh, web page and click on the link that says give, and uh, that'll take you to another site, a secure site, where you can uh, do your giving. It does charge a small fee. Uh, the other way that we did it was... The church was charged the small fee. Now they've just turned it around so that the people that are giving are charged the small fee. But I just encourage you to, to continue that. You can mail checks here to the church. You can drop them off at the church. Uh, like I said last time, the, uh, the doors, the glass doors on the Woodburn side of the church, there's enough of a gap there. You can stick a check or some cash through there if you want to do that way or drop it off at our house. Um, we, can, uh, we would still be willing to accept that. So let's have a prayer as we uh, begin. Our Heavenly Father, as we come to you today, we want to dedicate this time to you, and we would ask that you would guide us, especially in these unusual circumstances. I pray, Lord, that you would help us to take the next few minutes just to focus on you and to grow in our relationship with you. And uh, Lord, we pray that you would be glorified through all that we do and say. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. So uh, to start out with, I wanted to read Psalm 130. Out of the depths I have cried to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you that you may be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I do hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. Yes, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for which the Lord there is mercy, and with him is abundant redemption. And he shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities. May the Lord bless the reading of his word today. As we enter into our time of pastoral prayer, I would just ask if you do have prayer requests, you can mention them in the comment section uh, on the Facebook page, or you can send me a personal message if you don't want other people to know about it. Uh, but we are continuing to pray, and that's what our focus will be on Wednesday night. We'll have a little bit of teaching, but on Wednesday night, we'll spend a lot of time 
praying as well. So let's, uh, let's just pray together now. And uh, as we pray, uh, remember those requests. If you see requests that are listed on the Facebook page, I would ask that you would uh, remember those as well. Heavenly Father, as we come to you today, we are so thankful that we can be gathered. Even though we don't have the ability to be uh, with one another in person, we are thankful, Lord, that we can be uh, with one another uh, via the internet. And Lord, you have made things, uh, just some wonderful innovations for today that we can make use of and that we can enjoy. And we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the, this uh, spring season. And Lord, there are many things that we can be thankful for. Today, we, we say that we are thankful that you are our God and that you are bigger than all the problems and all the issues that we're going through. I want to pray today, first of all, for this church, and I ask that you would continue to bless your church. I pray that you would uh, enlarge its territory. I pray that your powerful hand would guide this church and that you would protect it from evil. May all that we do and say bring glory and honor and praise to you. We want to pray also for our nation and for our leaders. Uh, this is a trying time for them, and I pray that you would grant them wisdom and discernment as they decide how to best deal with this virus and with all the things that are happening connected with it. Would you uh, just give them guidance and direction in the work that they're doing? And Lord, uh, we pray for your wisdom and discernment for our leaders. We pray also, Lord, for the people around us that are protecting us. Many times we pray for our military personnel and our first responders. Lord, it seems like at this time we need to be praying for our doctors and nurses as well. And also for those people that are making sure that we have our basic needs taken care of. I pray, Lord, for your protection for them. And I pray, Lord, that you would give them strength for the job that they have, as well as godly wisdom. We pray also, Lord, for the requests, um, Lord, for those people that are struggling with sickness right now. I pray for your touch and for your healing in their bodies. Many people in our congregation have chronic issues, and I pray that you would just grant them relief. And I pray for healing in their lives. People that are struggling, maybe financially or emotionally, we pray, Lord, for your help and for your guidance for them. And I pray, Lord, that you would grant them wisdom and discernment in the issues that they're struggling with. We pray also, Lord, for uh, those people that are working to defeat the, this coronavirus. I pray, Lord, that you would give them wisdom and discernment, and that you would help them to know how to best deal with this disease. Now, Lord, we're going to spend some time in your word, and I, I thank you, Lord, for your word as we come to you today. I would just pray that your Holy Spirit would illuminate your word to us. Help us to sense your spirit. And I pray, Lord, that you would help us uh, as we learn and as we grow and as we read together. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'd invite you now to open your Bibles up to Matthew chapter 7. Um, you're sitting at home. You're watching this on a computer screen or maybe on a TV screen, and I would still just encourage you to get your Bible out and uh, to read along and see what we're talking about. So in just a minute, I'm going to read Matthew chapter 7, and then we will discuss that a little bit further. But, you know, I, as I was thinking about this, I thought it's kind of interesting as you watch a baby and they have their first encounter with a, a mirror. They get to see their reflection for the first time, and you know, they might first be a little bit baffled by that. And uh, so they look at that reflection and then they begin to realize that whatever the reflection is doing, uh, whatever they're doing, I should say, is what the reflection is doing as well. And it can be kind of humorous to watch because they don't really understand. They'll reach out and they'll touch the reflection and it doesn't feel like they think that it should. And they might try to look and see where that other baby is coming from. And, and it's kind of humorous to watch all of that. Uh, but at the same time, we understand that these babies are learning and that they're growing and um, they're, they're developing into the kind of, uh, they're developing into to grown adults. 
And this is just a part of the discovery and the learning process that they go through. But if someone like my age or your age would do the same thing, uh, it would make us wonder, hmm, what's the matter with that person? Why are they acting that way? Because we expect that once we reach a certain age that we know what the reflection is and what it's all about. But uh, while we understand that reflection, a lot of times we fail to take just a real serious look at our own lives and we fail to recognize um, what's happening in our lives and we can miss things in our lives. Sometimes we miss those things intentionally. We don't want to think about those things. And other times maybe it's unintentional that we miss these things. And so as we go into this passage of Scripture, um, Paul's giving us some warnings on how to deal with uh, the sin in other people. And uh, I think he's spending a lot of time talking in this passage, or I should say Jesus is talking in this passage about how important it is for us to examine our own lives and to understand what um, what's going on in our lives and have a handle on what God is all about as we do this. So let's look at this passage of scripture and then I'll share with you some warnings. Matthew chapter 7, beginning with verse 1, I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. These are Jesus' words, Judge not that you be not judged. For with the judgment you judge, you will be judged, and with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from, my, from your eye, and look, a plank is in your own eye. Hypocrite, first remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Do not give what is holy to the dogs, nor cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under feet and turn and tear you in pieces. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. Or what man is there among you who, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. May the Lord bless the reading of his word today. The first warning that I believe that Jesus gives to us is to judge carefully. And, you know, it's so easy to take this first verse out of context or even just isolate it all by itself. But uh, I hope that you understand and that you, you can see from this that if we were to just take that verse, judge not, that phrase right there, or judge not that you be not judged, and just isolate that all by itself, uh, apart from the context, it means a whole a different thing than what if, if we take it out, uh, take it and put it together. So context in this passage is very, very important. We need to look at the context of the passage of Scripture because Jesus is continuing to talk about the same idea in the next verse and in actually the next couple of verses. So we need to look at the, at the context. But I thought it might be helpful if you saw how uh, Eugene Peterson translated this passage in the Message Bible. There he said, Matthew chapter 7, verse 1, he says, Don't pick on people, jump on their failures, criticize their faults, unless, of course, you want the same treatment. So between these two, I think it's important for us to understand that what Jesus is looking for is that we would exercise and that we would demonstrate grace as we are dealing with other people. It's not about not judging. Jesus never says in this passage that we're not to judge, but what he says is to be careful about how you judge. He's kind of giving us a measuring stick, and he says whatever the measuring stick is that you use to measure uh, when you judge other people, that's the measure that's going to be used for you. And so we need to, to, to make sure that we're using grace in this. And as he goes on, he begins talking about specks and planks. Uh, obviously, if if 
someone that you know has a speck in their eye. Maybe they're holding their eye open. They're crying. They're trying to get it out. And you decide that somehow you're going to help them. But you've got a plank sticking out of your own eye. It makes it very hard for you to be able to see what's going on. Um, and so we need to be careful uh, looking at our own lives before we go on and we try to judge another person. We need to go through a process of careful evaluation and, and scrutinizing our own sins and our own shortcomings. And sometimes we just need to ask ourselves, is this something that's really necessary? And maybe that's what Jesus was really getting at. And that seems to be the way that uh, Peterson was interpreting it was, you know, maybe Jesus was talking more about just being critical of things that aren't sin issues. Um, rather than focusing on those, uh, you know, focus on what God would have you to focus on. And if we're going to go before another person and we're going to deal with them, uh, then we need to make sure that we're in a right relationship and in a right place with God before we do that ourselves. So if you're going to deal with another person's sins, we need to be willing to look at our own life. We need to be willing to examine ourselves and maybe we need to ask ourselves, am I the right person to be dealing with that? I see what's going on with them. And maybe even ask yourself, are you being extra critical in this situation? So I think maybe part of what Jesus was saying here is if you're in that other person's shoes and someone is going to come to you and talk to you about that, how would you want them to address you? How would you want them to to uh, speak to you? What is the attitude that you would want them to have? And so as we look at this, make sure um, that you're very careful about how you approach other people. Jesus isn't saying that we shouldn't judge because obviously Jesus judged other people. The apostles judged other people. That's a part of who we are. We're making judgments all the time. But what we need to be careful about is how we do it. Make sure that that we're in a right position, that our heart's in the right place. The second warning is to use discernment. Use discernment. And one of the things that I'm thinking about as I say use discernment is I think sometimes we just need to back up and, and look at this from maybe try to look at it from a slightly different perspective or a broader perspective. And as Jesus was talking about this, he brings into the whole issue I shouldn't say brings into the issue, but uses the illustration of dogs and pigs. Um, in this, at this particular time, I think probably they were still doing the sacrificial system. And so uh, you would be called upon to go to the synagogue and you would be expected to make sacrifices. And as you made those sacrifices, sometimes the meat would be given back to you and you could eat it. And, uh, with the understanding that this was a sacrifice that had been offered to God. And so it wouldn't be right for us to take that sacrifice and feed it to dogs. They wouldn't appreciate what the, what the sacrifice was made for. They wouldn't understand that this was meat that had been sacrificed, maybe for the forgiveness of sins or for some other thing. But this was a, uh, some other kind of sacrifice. And even, you know, the dogs in Jesus' day were different than the pets that we have today. They might have had pets, but, um, you know, a dog might turn on you and he might, tear you, uh, he might take the meat from you and then turn on you and bite you. And uh, he, taught, he uses um, also pigs as an illustration. He talks about pearls before swine or, or casting pearls before uh, the pigs. The pigs don't appreciate a pearl. They don't understand what it takes in order to get to a, a pearl. They're not walking into the jewelry store and understanding how expensive that pearl is or how important it might be to a woman. But uh, uh, we do. We're human beings. And so we don't cast our pearls before swine. We don't put our, our, our sacrifices before the dogs. And um, maybe sometimes as we are looking at how we are... Um, dealing with another person when it comes to this whole area of judging is that uh, um, maybe we're dishing out advice that people don't really want and they don't have any use for. Um, if I'm trying to tell a non-Christian that they're acting like a non-Christian, they might look at me and say, so I'm a non-Christian. Why should that matter to you? 
And uh, so we need to ask God for discernment as we deal with people and as we're doing this judging. Um, make sure that you know what's going on and you're asking God to give you guidance. A lot of times when I talk to my kids about things that they're doing, the things that are going on in their lives, they want to take and turn the blame on somebody else. They want to blame somebody else for whatever it is that's happening in their lives. <clears throat> and, you know, as people, we do that as well. As adults, we'd rather say, well, then rather than looking at what's going on in my life and what's wrong with in my life, I'd rather say, well, you know, look at him. Look at what's going on with him and how bad he is. And uh, so God may look at us and say, when we start talking about an, another person and the issue that's going on in their life, he may say, just wait. Now is not the time to deal with that. Or he might say, let someone else do it. Or he might say, just let it go. Because it's not that big of a deal. So, so far we've looked at the first warning is to judge carefully. The second warning is to use discernment. The third warning is we need to rely on God. We need to rely on God. And so as in verse um Seven, uh, Jesus says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find, knock and it will be open to you. And he's combining these three things, I think, in order to help us to understand that it's not just about asking. I think a lot of times we look at that, um, at uh, seeking advice from God and we just drop it there. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we, we talked about the Lord's Prayer and I said that we would say that part of the prayer, give us this day our daily bread. And so, you know, sometimes we might actually think, well, somehow God's going to miraculously provide this bread for me. And so I don't have to do anything from this point on. Well, in this passage, Jesus says, ask, but he also says to seek, which means that we need to be active in some way. And then he goes on and says, uh, talks about knocking. And so we can go and we can ask God for the things that are happening in our life. We can ask God about, um, Maybe what we see going on with another person. But not only are we supposed to be asking, but he also says that we're to seek, which uh, to me indicates that there's some activity that's involved. We're not just sitting around asking God, waiting for him to do something, but we're seeking the answer. Maybe that means that we're seeking, we're looking at God's word. We're looking at the scripture in order to understand what, what God might have us to do in that situation. But then as he gets to knocking, uh, both of the asking and the seeking are things that we might be able to do uh, in uh, by ourselves. But as we get to the knocking, we're actually going to go and we're going to interact with other people. And so we might be involving other people. And that can be humbling. It's not always easy to go and talk to other people about the things that are going on in our life or the things that we see or, or ask other people about their opinion on certain things. And so uh, we might we're involving other people, but we have to humble ourselves and ask for their help and um, receive what they have to say. Uh, and Jesus illustrates this by saying that uh, the God that we're addressing is going to take care of us. And he knows so well how to take care of us. And he uses the illustration of fathers. You know, if a child comes and they ask their father for, for a bread or for a fish, and that father's not going to give them a, a stone and say, ha, 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 you know, that's funny. I gave you a stone instead of a piece of bread. Or he's going to give them a snake instead of a fish and say, ha, 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 that's funny because I gave. Uh, you know, typically a father, even a very bad father, is going to understand. Um, when a child needs bread, they need bread. When the child needs something to eat, uh, we can provide fish for them or some other type of meat. And if your typical father who from God's perspective is evil, then and he knows how to take care of us, how much better is God going to be able to take care of us? So Christian, as we're facing, and I'm addressing Christian specifically, as we are facing uh, the, uh, the coronavirus pandemic thing right now, we need to understand God knows our needs. He knows what's going on in our world. He understands. And uh, he's still got things in control. And, but he still calls upon us to ask, to seek, and to knock. It's not an opportunity for us to be passive. We still need to be actively involved in our relationship with God. And then the third, or I'm sorry, the fourth warning that God gives us is that we need to know God. 
We need to know God, and that's, I'm just looking at this last verse, verse 12. Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. And I believe that Jesus was summarizing these first 11 verses here. <coughs> Excuse me. That he's saying we need to know God. We need to know God. And the way that we get to know God is by studying our scriptures, by knowing the prophets, by knowing the law, by knowing what's going on, uh, know God as best that we can. I was listening recently, and I couldn't remember exactly where I came, it came from, but someone was talking about if a couple comes to them for counseling, and their idea is that it's time for a divorce, the first thing that he asked them is, what's right? And then he asked them the question, what's best? We need to be careful that we get these two questions in the right order. What's right? Because sometimes what's right is going to dictate what's best for us. But if we start out by asking what's best, we might just be completely missing out on what's right. And so uh, I think part of the reason that we ask that question, what's right, is because that's going to take us to Scripture. That's going to take us to the place where we, we uh, know what God wants from us and not just what our opinion is or what our attitude is. And so we need to know Scripture, but we also need to know God. And the two are going to be so closely knit together that we learn about God and we know God better as a result of our time with God. And so Jesus is saying here, the golden rule, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. The, the golden rule pretty much sums up the law and the prophets. But we need that foundation. We need a solid place to build upon. We're talking today about judging. We're talking about talking to God. And these are all things that need to be built upon a solid foundation. It's so easy for us to get involved in, in uh, opinions, and uh, feelings and all of those types of things that we forget about what really what's real and what's truth and the Bible is real and the Bible is truth and so we need to know these things and we need to have that biblical foundation in order to make the decisions that Christ is calling us to do. Um, and several years ago People were creating the, the WWJD bracelets and t-shirts and all kinds of other things. What would Jesus do? My pet peeve with that was so many people were looking at that and they were saying, well, what would Jesus do? And they would kind of immediately start dealing with their feelings and their opinions rather than looking at truth. And we need to make sure that we're looking at truth when we're asking the question, what would Jesus do? When we're asking and seeking and knocking, we need to know truth about these things. We might ask for things that God say, says is wrong and recognize that we're wasting our time if we go that way. And so we need to somehow build into our lives truth. And one of the ways that we can do that is by reading our Bible daily. And earlier this year, I challenged you to read through the Bible this year. I'm probably not going to make it myself, but I'm working on it. I'm working on it, and I hope that a lot of you are working on it as well. Um, and we can learn from others as well, hopefully by tuning in here and spending time in church and spending time in Sunday school. You can learn and you can grow in these, in these areas. So <clears throat> when we feel that it's important for us to judge other people, Make sure that you're using grace. Sometimes it's important for us to remember what God saved us from. How good God has been to us and the forgiveness that he's offered to us. And sometimes we forget that. And so we treat other people poorly. We don't demonstrate the same grace that God gave to us. And we need to remember that God saved us from something we couldn't save ourselves from. And he demonstrated just a tremendous amount of grace. And we need to be willing to extend that grace as well. And we need to make sure that we're not getting stuck in our opinions. Don't get caught up in the idea of, well, I'm going to do this because it feels right. I'm going to do this because other people say that it's right. Instead, make sure that you're, you're basing these thoughts and these ideas and these opinions on the fact, on scripture, 
on what we know about Jesus, not what we think about Jesus, not on our attitude about Jesus, not about what other people say about Jesus or about God, but based on what we know because we've spent time in the word and we've learned about that. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, as we come before you today, and as we close out this time, I pray that you would help us to just take this passage of Scripture seriously. And I pray, Lord, that we would not be afraid to judge other people, but, Lord, that we would judge them with grace and with delicacy and with guidance from you. Help us, Lord, to honor you with the judging that we make. Help us, Lord, to, to just be the kind of people that you want us to be. And help us, Lord, to, to serve you with all that we do and say. And I pray, Lord, that we would grow in our relationship with you, that we would grow in our knowledge of you, and that you would be glorified because of the people that we are. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. One other thing I might mention to you, and it just seems appropriate because that's what I usually do at the end of the, the worship service, is there was food that was dropped off this week. So out there in the fellowship hall, there are there is bread. Um, hmm, what else is out there? Seems like there's some potatoes and onions and sweet potatoes and other stuff. like Oh, candy canes, lots and lots of candy canes. So there's that stuff out there if you want to help yourself to that. And also I'd remind you again, we can't be here to take up an offering. And Brenda told me this morning that uh, we are right now about $800 uh, in the good, uh, which is kind of low for us. We kind of build up a, a bit of a buffer, and that's going away at this time because people aren't giving as much. So uh, if you can give, I would encourage you, ask you to, to continue to do that. Uh, that's one of the disciplines of we talk about as a believer in Jesus Christ. And so I would encourage you to continue to, to uh, help out in that way. Thank you for being with me. I uh, wish that we could be together personally and uh, just kind of watch our media pages and your emails to see uh, what will end up happening next week. God bless you and goodbye.